And yet, you, Turkey Tom, did barely did any research at all to prove Irie's claims, which, again, appear to be false, as they are. You called out the commentary community for this, too. You called them out for, uh, originally believing that Ivory lied and is a cloud chaser when, in fact, in my opinion, that he is. Because cloud chasers are the reason why false allegations exist in the first place. And false allegations are the reason why I have trouble in believing in victims who spread their narrative for their own personal gain of likes, retweets, and followers. That's why false allegations exist. They boost your social media following. that I'd like to make. Firstly, I'll apologize for my comparison to Red Kiwis from my original document. That wasn't a fair comparison to make. I had some friends of mine reach out to me about that at the time that I released the document. You know what? That's completely fair. These two situations... There was a long history of degenerate, unjustifiable behavior from Pyrocynical. This story is far from over. Thanks for watching and listening to what I have to say. So, what did the commentary community say? After providing this as his evidence, many people were still in disbelief at the news, or they felt that there was a possibility that they were lying. This is also when people began releasing videos about the subject. Diesel Patch just put out a video where he said that the messages didn't seem like something that Pyro would say, and that he wasn't willing to completely believe these allegations yet without solid proof that the messages were real. Do I think he did it? I can't say because there isn't any proof. So, to me, Pyro is innocent until we actually see some evidence. Other similar channels, like Prison Day Luke, would make the same assertion. But you didn't really give us anything concrete until his girlfriend, and even then, that's not definitive that this was him. The basic issue most people had with these allegations at first is that there was no proof that Pyrocynical was actually the one behind the DMs. One thread was created on Twitter shortly after, where they claimed that Ivory had sent them ample proof of the messages being real, but it didn't really pick up very much traction, and as a result, it's been largely ignored in videos going over the topic. Most people were waiting until Pyro released a statement on the subject, which he did on Reddit on November 10th of 2020. Hey gamers, I would like to take this opportunity to address a false allegation recently made against me on Twitter. As some of you may have seen, it has been claimed back in 2016 when I was 19 years old that I groomed an individual who was 15 years old at the time. I want to set the record straight with you and share all the truth. The accusation is 100% false and incredibly irresponsible. This red post would be a quick turning point for the allegations, amassing nearly 25,000 upvotes and quickly being spread across YouTube and Twitter. People rejoiced, claiming that Pyrocynical had quickly and swiftly disproved the allegations, making this a clear case of yet another YouTuber being falsely accused of something which they did not do. I tweeted out a link to the Reddit thread at the time, letting everyone know about what had happened. While my tweet itself was pretty neutral, most of the responses to it were anything but. Everyone quickly drew the conclusion that Pyro had redeemed himself and was cleared in the public eye. Simply a guy with some weird fetishes. This is untrue. It's hard to tell if most of these people read through his Reddit post, but Pyro didn't prove much of anything in it. His first move was to admit that the messages were real. Okay, well, no sweat. Sure, he's weird, but that doesn't mean he knew the age of Ivory at the time, right? He never once disclosed the fact that he was 15 at the time of these exchanges commenced. He didn't include his age in his bio until he was 16, but I was not on Twitter between 28th of December 2016 until the 29th of June 2017, as I was suspended. He also included a few posts from people across Twitter claiming that Ivory lied about their age. What Pyro was doing here is building a case that Ivory Rasmus is not a credible source, and therefore, he is not to be trusted. Smart move especially when you don't have anything else to switch back with it. However, one quick look at Ivory's Twitter account from this time will reveal that he was very open about his age publicly on Twitter. I'm a 15-year-old shut-in who checks his phone a lot, but I hate how little kids bring a desk's worth of tech everywhere if possible. Well, okay, that's just proof that Ivory said his age a lot on Twitter. He could have been lying in other places, right? Pyro said that he was suspended on Twitter before Ivory turned 16, at which... 
in his post. What is largely heralded as the greatest defense of Pyrocynical by himself and the entire community is incorrect. But without proof that Pyro knew they were underage, you couldn't say that he was purposely being inappropriate with a minor, let alone that was grooming, or yet again, that it was actually Pyro. The best that Ivory had was Pyro's girlfriend Ida messaging him about it, and although her messages were suspicious and really toxic, it wasn't definitive proof that the messages were from Pyro. What are you saying? Not definitive proof? Did you even read the messages that you were showing on screen? Are you suggesting that Pyro Cynical's own girlfriend, the woman who he has known for years and has been in this community for years, became so angry that she made up a story about Pyro messaging Ivory and admitted to everything? She was so mad that she came out and said that it was all true, including that Pyro knew Ivory's age? He also links the screenshots of people that knew Ivory talking about how Ivory would lie about their age for role-playing. And if you're lying to other people about your age, why wouldn't you lie to Pyro about it? You may find it interesting how prison mate Luke was so reluctant to believe the allegations that Ivory made based off of a few screenshots, but he immediately took a few screenshots that Pyro had in his foot longer, which, mind you, were not from Pyro, were not from Ivory, were not from anyone Pyro Cynical knew, but were random people who came out at the time to accuse Ivory Rasmus of lying and later apologized for making these accusations. And if he had actually read through all of the leaked messages from Ivory, which Pyro Cynical himself said were real, he would see an instance when Ivory said that he was a minor. And even if you want to say that Pyro didn't lie, and this is not convincing enough for you by some miracle, fine, I get that. But he didn't even ask their age. Why wouldn't a YouTuber with millions of subscribers, who is an adult, 19 years old, ask some random person they are messaging on Discord about inhaling each other's farts for their age? Pro Jared, someone who is vindicated, prior to Pyro for his own accusations, was let off because he was actively lied to about the ages of who he was talking to. Pyro Cynical likely knew Ivory's age and that's just fine to you? I don't know anyone who would justify an age gap of a 19 year old and a 15 year old messaging sexually. So is that what these YouTubers are trying to say is completely okay? Or are they just incapable of doing the research? A few people cited the tweet from Ivory where he expressed hatred towards Pyro Cynical's content in 2017, claiming that they could have ulterior motives, a la cloud chasing or trying to reach into Pyro Cynical's business. Business. All right, I'm going to say the obvious and try not to beat a dead horse, but I hate Pyrocynical. He's one of the biggest leeches on YouTube. He's a hypocrite, he self-loathes, and he painfully panders hating on. Weak, 2 out of 10. Next. This message wouldn't make sense in context if Ivory was claiming to be friends with Pyrocynical around this time. However, as someone else pointed out, this was clearly a copypasta cross-posted from Reddit. Which brings us to our next point. Is Pyrocynical guilty of grooming? Looking at the simple definition, it's clear that this isn't the right word to use. And looking at an interview with Tommy C, it's clear that Ivory's understanding of this definition may have been warped by the people around him. Did somebody tell you to use the word grooming? I was in a call with my friend when I, like, typed it out, and I typed, like, I remember I typed that and asked, like, is that okay? Because, like, you know about this, and that was a, I got a yes for that, so. Yes. Because it, it reads yeah, more like absolutely. a YouTube, like, thumbnail. Do you, you honestly believe, and, and, and just, be, just be honest, did you not understand the definition of the word completely? I, I feel like it was, like, forcing a, or, like, manipulating a child into a, like, sexual situation. Okay. Yeah, right. that's what that's what that word means to me. Sure. And like, I definitely was. That's what it waits to you. In okay. There. So from a technical standpoint, did Pyrocynical groom anyone? I guess we don't really have any proof of that in the traditional sense if we want to go by the book. And I also don't think that he's a pedophile. But does that make what he did right? Absolutely not. YouTubers like Red Kiwis have been targeted in the past for being 19 years old and knowingly messaging a 15 year old sexually. Ironically, by one YouTuber who was friends with Pyrocynical at the time and received his own case of false allegations where he was lied to about the age of the girl he was talking to. It's a little crazy how common these accusations are. And it just goes to show that it's not really shocking that this one managed to slip through the cracks, especially with accusations from years ago being completely mishandled by people who were pushing them. Pyro was trying to hook up with a 13-year-old fr uh, girl from France, all right, that he was technically like a pedo or a weirdo or something, right? And I would not even be making this video if all that was done was that allegations were disproven. But instead what happened is that the entire community overstepped their place to call Ivory a cloud chaser, a flat out liar, and all while having no proof and trying to push the message that we shouldn't believe false allegations without evidence. And you turn out to be what a lot of people were calling you from the start, a cloud chaser trying to ruin someone's career on YouTube, let alone on the internet, for attention. And now you want to act all bitter on Twitter about how no one believes you if you can't prove something. And if you're just doing it for clout, maybe you shouldn't put it out there. This
at this point, you should apologize to those that you originally insulted because they, their opinions are probably are probably more invalid than yours. Even if you disagree with them, that doesn't mean you need to rudely say your brain is fucking liquid and this video is a fucking joke to any of these guys. How about you take the criticism, Turkey Tom, and don't lash out at people like that, because... What you're doing is not really being a man and owning up to the criticism that you're getting. And the fact that you said in that in the end of your video that this situation is far more that this situation it in it of itself is far from over. It is actually far from over for Pyrocynical. The situation, however, is not far from over from you. To which is why you will probably go out of your way and take down people who responded to you in a much more re and they didn't have to lash out at you when you lash out at them just because you have made some poor uh, points about Pyrocynical once again As the great Pyrocynical said himself in his last response, in his my response video, he clearly stated, A piece of admitted fault and apologize to the best of my ability. I just want to move on from this. I want it to end. Thank you for watching. And hopefully this gives you a more widened view on the situation. Pyrus Nicole said that at the end that we we should move on move forward from this. And he is right. We should. The fact that you, Turkey Tom, don't want to move on move on from this because you want the situation con to continue is completely disrespectful and not honoring Pyrocynical's wishes whatsoever. Even if Nicholas Diorio claims that he's going to make a video on Pyrocynical in the next six months. Like he replied here saying, like I said, shit's way more nuanced than either and base would like to admit and the details are getting overlooked. I think this would benefit heavily from a six months later perspective, which means he may do a video on it. There's no telling for sure, but he may do a video. But Mr. Turkey Thomas, you really have to apologize. You need to make an actual apology video instead of a statement defending yourself, because what you did is not really defending yourself, but it's just making the situation even more worse than it already is. So, for right now, I will end this for you. This is the end of the Pyrocynical Allegations. People like these these slow patches
prison mate look prison mate look and and since this is, society has made a response to the hypersynical allegations while these three youtubers got criticized by turkey tom which was probably which was probably <clears throat> in their opinion rightfully deserved because because you know they messed up but Turkey Tom who made a second video before the final video responding to Kyle Cynical at least I hope it's the final video then have to dig deeper into the false allegations that have already been proven that Kyra Cynical is of course not a groomer which he did state in his second video that Kyra Cynical is not a groomer but when he made this response his third and hopefully last response he reinstated that while he first stated no that he's not a groomer, Turkey Tom is also not comfortable saying no. And for what reason is for him to not be criticized, is for him to create an attitude towards people on Twitter when he mentioned that he in general, doesn't want to be criticized by parasitical fans who have the right to fully criticize him for that obvious reason. And if you're going to criticize the entire commentary community for not believing in Ivory, when in fact that I knew all along that Ivory still doesn't have the full on evidence that we need to see in the first place to which he um, immediately admitted in the Tommy C interview that that his friends were pressuring him to use the word grooming because that's what they came up with is highly irresponsible for you, Turkey Tom, to jump on the bandwagon after you criticized some of the people in the commentary community for not taking the victim's side when, in my opinion, that they were right the first time that Harlow Cynical is not a groomer and that. I read Rasmus is a cloud chaser because the more tweets he's gonna keep making about this, the more cloud chasing he's gonna get. He simply said last time around Thanksgiving that he wants to move forward, but yet he has yet to do that until then. Ivory then responded, but I think I'm done with this. I literally tried Lucid Boy's systematic protection of predator and their kid audiences. Dumb fuck YouTube friends and everyone in between are still being manipulated by them. When he lastly responded, and I hope this is his final response, he, he then never retweeted, quote tweeted a tweet from Turkey Tom again, other than last time. Because Last time he quote tweeted a tweet was 
December 6th, when he actually promised that he would let the situation go and move on since uh, Thanksgiving. To which he then, to which he last time tweeted about that. He said in the last part, just leave me the fuck fuck, fuck alone if you disagree with what I said. It's been almost a month and I'm trying to move on because I do other things with my with my life then call people out and had I read once again as I stated in the very last video I did on the situation that if had I read not quote tweet your tweet turkey Tom I read would have actually moved on he would have moved on this entire found message, message that I'm not going to read, which was posted on December 2nd, 22nd, which is six days later. He has then said that he is done with this and... That hopefully he wants to move on. So hopefully he will not respond or retweet again and just go back to his music. In conclusion, had you not criticize the entire commentary community when you yourself have made some poor examples of information like the time when you compared Pyrocynical to Kiwis, which you apologized for. We could just leave it at that. We didn't need a whole 23 minute response to Pyrocynical. All everyone, including myself, was waiting for is a apology. We finally got that from you. in the last couple of minutes to where you finally said that you apologize for comparing Pyrocynical to Kiwis because the Kiwi situation was ongoing at this time and you didn't really think much of it, which you should have when you instantly compared Pyrocynical to Kiwis the wrong way. And if you did not want to take criticism from, from everyone on Twitter who replied to your tweets, then you shouldn't be criticizing your own community. Your own community didn't deserve to be criticized. The fact that you call them out and others out by not doing a little bit more research? Well, the shoe is now on the other foot with you, Turkey Tom. By calling out Pyrocynical fans for being with the so-called quote-unquote liquid brains, you wouldn't go as far as to denounce the criticism that you're getting from somebody like this guy who tweeted at you the original
response. Saying this one is a joke too, and then proceed to call out everyone else. Happy not insinuate, insinuate to go after people you responded to by insulting them, calling them. Saying your brain is fucking liquid. And by not accepting criticism from people who called you out, you should probably apologize, Turkey Tom. Because some people who call you out for the right reasons. They do not deserve to be insulted by you. Ford, one that assembles more vehicles in the U.S. than any other manufacturer built for America. For any reason, when you completely lashed out on somebody like Happy Go Thirteen for giving you. The criticism that you highly, highly deserved, and you proceed to say your brain is fucking liquid to further estimate your point, which is just wrong. <laughs>